I'll be seeing you. Give my regards to Kalamazoo. <laughs> Happy landing. Hello, Edwin. What's going on in there, Mr. Foster? The community is being broadcast. Got a few minutes? Come in and join us. Oh, no. Oh, you don't have to be good. <laughs> Just loud. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we will open our community sing this afternoon with a rousing chorus of Kent Town Races. <laughs> and put everything you've got into it. May I have a chord in D, please? The Kent Town ladies sing this song, Do-da, Do-da. The Kent Town Racers have had my song, Oh, Do-da Day. I come down, down, and my head caves in, Do-da, Do-da. I go back home with a heart of a Oh, Do-da Day. guide and a gentleman for deliberately and maliciously creating a disturbance in violation of General Order 44, Section B. Guide Second Class Edward Kane is hereby dishonorably discharged. Take off that uniform. 
Jones, take that coat out and have it cleaned. It's stained with dishonor. Come in. Hello. Know what happened today? Yes, I heard all about it this afternoon at the studio. Listen, Eddie, you mustn't sing anywhere but here until you're ready for an audition. You might have spoiled everything. All I did was try and help the company out, and what do I get for it? Fire. Oh, you'll be back there one of these days, and it won't be in a uniform either. You bet your life I will. I'll lick that microphone if I have to tear a tonsil doing it. I'll get on the air, and I'll be as big as, as, as the Phantom. Hey, that's the old wake up and live spirit. Did you practice today? I'll say I did. I said no to everything. Well. It's a good thing I didn't run into Mae West. Oh. You're the one? Oh, sure, you're the Phantom. Why don't you go home and sleep at all? That's the fourth drunk in succession. You have any luck? Yeah, all bad. Look at that stack of wires from Phantoms all over the country. Every nut in town has called me up. That's probably another one. Hello. Yes, Steve. Say that again. Listen, they delivered a microphone and a lot of radio equipment there the day before yesterday. I know what I'm talking about. I got the lowdown from one of their engines. I'll be right over. You stick here till I get back. I think Steve's on the right track. Well, get him off before a street car runs over him. Come on, Eddie. Oh, I don't feel like singing tonight. How about taking a ride up Riverside Drive on a bus? Some other time. Look at that moon out there. Never mind the moon. Remember, do your task every day at the same time. Say, Ben Bernie is on the air right now. Let's listen to him. You know, the Phantom is singing again tonight, and I've never heard him yet. Now, Eddie, don't weaken. I'll try not to. Is this it? Yeah. What's your pop? 3B, Alice Huntley. Go on back to the office. I'll handle this myself. Okay, Charlie Chan. <laughs> We've had a swell engagement here, and believe me, we're shy. And I want all you guys and gals to show up tomorrow night, because I got a surprise for you. I'm going to present the Phantom Troubadour in person. So help me in person. 
And now another little number dedicated to Walter the Winch, entitled, You're One in a Million, and that's one too many. Play, laddies, and Bernie will fiddle while Winch will burn. Now, don't ask me any more about it. Just be here tomorrow night at 9 o'clock and wear your tuxedo. I will if I can get it away from the moth. Good night. Good night. Now, remember. I will. I will. I will. I was. I am. I... Hey, Eddie. Oh, hello, Mr. Winchell. Say, I got a nice little item for your column. I'll bet you have. What were you doing up in Alice Huntley's apartment just now? I was... Uh... Now, wait a minute. Don't get me wrong ideas, Mr. Winchell. Alice is a nice girl. Who said she wasn't? Hop in. I'll drive you home. Thanks. She's only been showing me how to get over my mic fright. I'm afraid of microphones, you know. Oh, sure. And Lindbergh's afraid of airplanes. Come on, what's the lowdown? On the level. Alice has got a phony microphone up in her apartment. I've been going up there every night just to rehearse some songs. So you think she's scared you, huh? Almost. I got more confidence now. She's making a self-made man out of me. I mean, I... But can you do it on a live microphone? I think so. How would you like to try it on my program? Oh, you're kidding. No, I'm not. I'll put you on tomorrow night. Tomorrow? Uh, no, uh, that, that's too soon. Listen, Eddie, this is a swell yarn for me. Here's a girl with a great idea gets bounced off the air. She runs into a guy who's scared to death of microphones, puts her idea in practice on him, cures him of my fright, and I put him on the air and prove it. It's a swell yarn for me. A swell builder for the girl. You'd like to help Alice, wouldn't you? You bet I would. And what do you say? Is it a go? I'll do it. That's fine. I'll see you at the office for lunch and we'll lay the whole thing out. Fine. Wait a minute. Don't say anything to Patsy about this. Oh, no. And let's keep it a surprise for Alice, too. All right. Okay? Okay. Thanks, Mr. Winchell. Thanks a million. So long. So long. Yippee! Oh, but I'm happy. Oh, oh, oh. But I'm happy. I didn't strike oil in my backyard. Look. Cut the noise. Who do you think you are, the Phantom? Oh. 